okay, I'm going to talk to you about MRLS or male reproductive or male reproductive loss syndrome. Um, this is a Gypsy Manor, they're adorable. Um, but viewer discretion is advised because there is some kind of a gory ones in here. So if you get guys squeamish, just step up in a minute. But we're not awesome. It's not real samples, it's just, you know, on the screen. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, what is it? Well, back in the spring of 2001, there were some cases being reported of hundreds of people, or uh, hundreds of individuals being losing their falls or having really sick or abortion stillbirths. And they had a lot of pericarditis, uveitis, and encephalitis, and they couldn't figure out why. Um, and the fibrotus pericarditis, the pericardium is the clear sex surrounds the heart. So bacteria will get in there and <coughs> wreak all kinds of havoc. And uveitis, the inflammation in the eye, the eye will swell up, get really cloudy, full fluid. fluid. And encephalitis is a viral infection, and there's western and eastern encephalitis. I'm pretty sure there's vaccinations for that. So I know there's two people in here, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure there is. No, okay, is, is the uh, pericarditis and stuff, is that in the mirror then? It actually, there is a, this is weird as it sounds, because this is a, co this collection of all these problems is MRLS, but there are individuals that were not pregnant mares that did get these. As a result of what's caused, and I'm going to show okay, you what yeah, caused, okay. and it's really freaking weird. Mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> but there, there were individuals that do get these okay. with the result, but I'm going to talk about the pregnant mares because mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, it's a fascinating <laughs> thing. It's it centered around Lex Lexington, Kentucky, basically, I mean, you know, in that area because that's where all the thoroughbreds mm -hmm. are. Um, I had a student one time that worked on the farm, and one of the workers said, See that mare that just got off the truck? Guess what the owner paid for it? And the answer was two million dollars. Oh, yeah. yeah, big figures, big money. So it's a different kind of world. But yeah, it was Kentucky and surrounding states, and the cause actually does lie right here in Indiana, and it kind of freaked me out when I figured out what it was. So this is fibrous pericarditis. This lining that you can see, this is the heart. But this lining, see how it's all red and irritated and infected? It's not supposed to be that way. So if you need to get that checked out like immediately, because it can wreak all kinds of problems. This is equine uveitis. It sometimes it is unilateral. Most times I think they said it was unilateral. So which is also freaky. Yeah, this so just gets really puffed up, kind of like a balloon, like a water balloon, and it just gets full of fluid. And they can't see. So uh, what happens in pregnant mares? They have early fetal losses, like not even a couple months into their gestational period, and abortions and late gestation, like fetus is there, but they just lose it, and still births, and even if the foals live and they get birth, they are very sick, weak, and sometimes don't even make it the first few days or weeks. Um, and red bag, um, some of you may have heard of it, is premature separation of placenta. This is really, really bad. You do not want this happening in your pregnant mare. So as soon as you see this, even when she's laying in the mare, if you can get it as soon as possible, get on the horn with your veterinarian, like immediately, and have them get out to your farm, like as fast as possible, to try and save the foal. Well, I've seen cases that they do lose them because this is where they get all their nutrition and their oxygen. You cut that off, and they basically suffocate and die in the in the womb. So, and then pericarditis and uveitis and encephalitis. I did talk about. You got so. a question over there? We can take. Yeah. So the placenta just like gets <coughs> detached from the urine wall. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, in horses, here's how the placenta attaches to the uterus by fingers, little fingers. Yeah, it's not usually you have like buttons that attach someplace, but they have like fingers to yeah, attach the it. The buttons are ruminants. Yeah. But these are it's called diffuse attachment, mm -hmm. and it's not as held as good as cattle. So yeah, they just depends on how much is out. If there's only a small area that's out, then there's another area that's still attached. So because the placenta is the lungs of the fetus. That's where it's getting its oxygen and all the nutrients. Its lungs are not working at all, the fetus now. So and I know some pair, some mares may be reoccurring of this problem, and they just wouldn't breed them anymore. I've seen some of them where people have actually intervened and in trying to pull this out and get it cut, and sometimes they still lose the babies even if they get too early. Yes, Robin? I know like sometimes it doesn't occur just because of the MLS, because I have my mom's friend oh, breeds yeah. Oldenburgs, and she actually, I think it was like two years ago, maybe lost an $18,000 filly yeah. because yeah. she yeah. It's a It's one of the symptoms of this 
uh, loss, but it can happen other yeah, times. It yeah, it can happen. Yeah. Good point. Okay, the cause is a little bug. Well, it's caterpillar. It's an eastern tank caterpillar. And what they look like, they're, they're gold and brown, but they cover their these little hairs, and they're called C, really. And the horses will eat them when they're on the ground or they're on whenever they're eating. But these hairs, they ingest these hairs, and the hairs will puncture the intestinal lining, and then they get into the bloodstream, and then they get to the placental wall. And that area is just immunosufficiently, immuno it's not armed against anything. They get in, and bacteria go with them. And with nothing to fight against these, the, it's just, it's gone. The baby's just gone. It doesn't have, and have anything against it, and they just, she aborts her baby because they get in there. Um, they like to nest in black cherry trees. That is their favorite tree, but that is not the only tree. We have apple trees in my backyard, and we get two, three, four nests in a tree. Mm -hmm. they, are, they will t take what they can get. Um, but of course, other abortion causes trauma, microbial invasion, environmental factors. I've seen like they get kicked or they get into a fight. And they oh, is that, that could be quite a long list. What oh yeah, abortion. long list. But those are just some of them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, some of these trees, you'll see them. Some of you who've lived in it, you guys might have seen them before. But I didn't know what they were, what the name was until I looked at the picture. I don't know if you guys have seen these before. Sometimes they come by the dozens or hundreds in your yard. Um, but these little hairs that stick out, they are a defense mechanism. And of course their coloring is like keeping them off, but they swallow these, they get lodged in the tissues and they travel throughout the bloodstream because they get so small. And this is what they look like when they're older. So if you see these, like on your property, be forewarned and start looking around, especially if you've got pregnant mares yeah. walking around. Um, they are a nuisance. They eat everything. They will destroy your garden, plants, trees, everything. They're just, they're a pest. Um, and this is what the nest mm. looks like. You think it's a spider nest? It's not. It's an yeah. eastern tick caterpillar Full nest. Of caterpillars. It is loaded. Hundreds. Hundreds. And they are a problem. This is a black cherry tree. Like I said, they don't, they do like this. And of course, the fruit <coughs> does have cyanide in the pits. So, but there have been no links to the fact whether these have been toxic or if it's been these, but it's been, there have been the cases when they studied it was the CD that was causing the problem. But these are poisonous. They're not good if you have them laying around. So just be on the lookout for these kind of trees and of course these nests. You can see them, they just make trails along the branches and they wreak all kinds of problems. Um, prevention measures. So got one minute. Okay, um, get rid of your trees. Or you can use insecticides on the nests. We burn the nests out down at home, kerosene up, light them up, just burn them out. Um, limit pasture access with the horses, or you monitor them. Um, I did find this mask. Um, put them on the muzzle of the horses, and they can't eat the caterpillars and cause problems. Ultrasounds to monitor progress. If you see problems, get them done while early before they cause any other problems. And check your outdoor areas, your feed, your housing for the caterpillars, and get them removed. Because if not, horses are going to eat them, and they're not going to know. So you need to get rid of them. So. Okay. Questions? Excellent. Questions or comments? Please. <laughs> it's a fascinating how they diagnose it. Yeah. Do you know the caterpillars have any effects on, like, I mean, if they're not ingested, like, if they, if they come in contact with skin for, like, I mean, a human or, or a species? No. I mean, I picked them up as a kid, and I never... Yeah. But it's like, it's just ingesting them. Of course, they've, there's not been any leads like that the caterpillars themselves are poisonous, but some are. So don't pick up caterpillars that are hairy, mm -hmm. look cute, they're poisonous. But there have not been any links that these are poisonous, but it's the hairs that they swallow and they just... It makes little <coughs> incisions into the lining of the intestine and then bacteria get into the blood supply. That's the whole thing. It took years to figure this out though. Yeah. Are horses purposely eating these? No, because when they're grazing, because they'll be on the ground and they might be in their feet kind of 